Jill from Kids Baking Club, and while we're at home, I wanted to have some fun with the kids and parents by bringing you into the kitchen for some learning. We're going to make a fruit cobbler today. So what I wanted to first tell you about is if you have not downloaded our free cookbook, the specifically kid-tested recipes called Kids Can Bake, just click the link below or go to kidsbakingclub.com. So you guys ready to get started? We're gonna make some fresh fruit cobbler. So you can actually use any kind of fruit. Today I'm gonna to use nectarines and strawberries, but any fruit, but citrus fruits like lemons, oranges, and limes, probably not the best, but anything like apples, pears, peaches, strawberries, any type of berry would be wonderful. So let's get started. All right, so I'm gonna be using some strawberries that I got at the market. Remember with strawberries, you don't wanna wash them until you're ready to use them. Actually, if you wash them and put them in the fridge, they actually start to spoil. So it's best to just keep them the way you found them at from the grocery store, then wash them. And I'm just gonna use my safety knife and cut off the tops. And then you always wanna plant it on a flat surface so it doesn't roll around. It's hard to cut when it rolls. So you wanna get it on a flat surface, hold on one hand, and always keep your knife away from your fingers. So I'm just gonna cut here. And you kinda of want big pieces because you want it to be nice and chunky. So I'm gonna finish those up. When you're done with those, you're gonna put them in a bowl. I'm gonna move on to the nectarines. Now with the nectarines, you might be able to cut with a safety knife, but I'm gonna use another safety knife, always making sure you're just holding the handle. And do you see how it's rolling? I wanna find the part where it doesn't roll, and that's right here. Then I wanna hold it, and I wanna to go to the side. Now this fruit has a pit. So I'm gonna cut around the pit like this. And see how I kept away? And then I want to, again, find the flat surface and cut small little pieces. And we're gonna go ahead and cut all these pieces of fruit. And then what I'm gonna do after I put all the fruit inside, I'm gonna take any type of sugar, either maple syrup, honey, a little bit of sugar, because I want something that when it heats up in the oven, that's going to crystallize and bind to the other fruit. Otherwise, it'll be a little too juicy. So when I'm all finished, I'm gonna drizzle on some honey and mix it up and then we're gonna move on to making our cobbler topping. All right, all our fruit is done. Now we're just gonna mix it up a little bit. Make sure you put down in the comments, I wanna see what kind of fruit you guys used. So go ahead and take whatever sugar you're going to use. I'm using honey. Just gonna squeeze a little bit on, not too much, just enough that it binds. All right, this is going to go into a pan like this, any pan that you want, as long as it's a baking pan. And now we're ready to make the topping. We are ready to make our cobbler topping. I do want to talk to you about butter because butter comes in sticks like this and they come with eight tablespoons, which is also a half of a cup. And this recipe calls for six tablespoons. So what you need to do is count one, two, three, four, five, six, just like I did here, and you're going to cut that out. So I'm gonna use that part. It also talks about putting them into cubes. So taking a safety knife, you're just gonna cut them into cubes, and you wanna keep the butter cold until you're ready to use it. So I actually cut this butter up before I even made the fruit, so I had it nice and cold. So I'm gonna set this aside for just a second, and we're gonna start on our flour. So measuring cups come like this, and you, most often they actually have on there what this is. This is one cup, and this is a half a cup. Now, how many cups of half a cups do you think I need to make one cup? You're right, two cups. Two half cups make one cup, but this recipe is interesting because it's one cup and one half cup. So when you put your flour in your flour bowl, you wanna bring it all the way to the top, but you wanna make sure that it's level. So I always use the back side of a knife and score it so I have a perfect measurement. So that's my one cup. And this is my half cup. Get a heaping, then score it. 
and then put it in there. Okay, we got that done. Now this has just a little bit of sugar, so I'm not gonna use a measuring cup, I'm actually gonna use measuring spoons. And once again, they come in different sizes. Now this is a little tricky because this one is actually one teaspoon and this is one tablespoon. So one teaspoon will say usually TSP and one tablespoon will usually say TBS. So make sure that you can see it. You can see that the one teaspoon is a lot smaller. This one calls for three, oh my goodness, that happens, three tablespoons of sugar. So usually you don't have to do a level because unlike flour, you can level it up. I'm gonna sprinkle it. I always sprinkle my ingredients on top so they don't clump in one place. Sprinkle two and three. All right, and now I'm going to use some baking powder. We love baking powder because baking powder is called leaven, and what it does is when it hits heat and moisture, it starts to rise. It's really cool. And this is asking for one teaspoon and one half. So this is my one teaspoon, and this is great because it's got a little lever here, so I can score it really easy. I'm going to dump that in, and it calls for a half a teaspoon. So here's my half and dump that in. Now, I wanna remind you, if you have your baking powder right here, you've gotta stir it. If you don't stir it, then it's just gonna clump right there. So I'm gonna take my whisk or a spoon, and I'm gonna make sure that it's stirred really, really well. Now this recipe also calls for a half a teaspoon of salt. Some people don't like having a lot of salt, so you don't have to put it in. And I'm actually not going to because this was salted butter. Butter comes in either salted or unsalted, but you'll see on the recipe, which you can get at kidsbakingclub.com, that it calls for salted butter. So I'm gonna take my butter and I'm gonna dump it in my thing. And this is the fun part because you get to use your hands. <laughs> so you're gonna take your hands and you're going to make it into small little pea size. All right, as you can see, I made the butter into small pea size um, shapes. So now that's gonna be nice and good to actually mix with our liquid. So now we're gonna work on the liquid. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some milk and you can use any type of milk. You can use almond milk, dairy milk, cow milk, um, any kind of milk you want. So we're gonna do six tablespoons. So we're gonna do one, two, count with me, three, <laughs> four, five, and six. And now we're gonna add a little bit more honey just to give it a little sweetness too. I know we added a little bit of sugar, but I'd like to add a little bit more honey just a little squeeze like that. And we're gonna do a teaspoon of vanilla. It's best to use pure vanilla. That's a pure extract, it's not imitation, it comes from a vanilla bean, and it gives it a lot of flavor. This recipe calls for just egg yolk, which is the fat of the egg. So what you're going to do is you're going to just go ahead and do that. If you need your parents' help, ask them for help. Use your two thumbs, and you're just gonna let the egg white drip out. And now you just have the yolk, okay? You can save the egg white for your omelet. <laughs> now what we're just gonna do is we're gonna mix this together, and we're gonna add it to our dry ingredients. And what I always do when I'm adding wet ingredients to dry ingredients is I put it in the middle. So I make like a little well. Got a little honey on there. Look a little well. And then I do it in the middle just so the ingredients don't go to the sides. And then you're just going to take a spoon and mix it till it becomes a gel. And then we're gonna get our fruit and we're gonna plop our dough. Now, at this time, you should preheat your oven. It takes about 15 minutes to preheat. So go ahead and pre preheat your oven to 350 degrees. You always wanna put 
baked goods in a preheated oven. All right, we're ready to put this on top of our fruit. All right, now I'm going to just do little plops so everyone gets a little piece of the dough plus the fruit. 